In this demo, we will discuss WebAssembly or WASM debugging, building on the theoretical and practical aspects of writing and running a WASM module. We'll also examine recent improvements in WASM debugging for C and C++ applications made by mscripten and Chrome Dev tools. First, let's explore the basic debugging experience. Here, we're creating a C library to calculate the factorial of non-negative integers. As you may know, the factorial of a number n is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. As you can see in our example, the code calculates the factorial of a non-negative integer. It employs a loop to multiply numbers from 2 to n along with conditional statements to handle special cases like negative inputs and the factorial of 0 or 1. The logic inside the loop is a straightforward implementation of the algorithm where the result is multiplied by the numbers from 2 to n. For Chrome browser-based debugging, we also need HTML glue code. On the HTML side, we import the JavaScript generated by the mscripten compiler, initialize it, and then call the exported factorial function with a sample number, say 10. To compile this module, we use the command dmcc with debug underscore wasm underscore basic dot c as the file name, passing parameters to generate an ES module and building it with optimizations enabled. Upon opening the HTML file in Chrome and accessing the Chrome DevTools console, we can see the factorial of 10 as expected. Inspecting the sources, we can view the generated JavaScript and WebAssembly files. We set a breakpoint at the entry point in our HTML file. Refreshing the window, execution pauses at the breakpoint, allowing us to step into the mscripten generated JavaScript code and observe how it imports our WASM modules factorial function. Moving forward, we can directly jump from JavaScript to the generated WASM module. Here, we see a raw WebAssembly view of the WebAssembly module. Though intimidating, this basic debugging experience is manageable without compiler assistance. Chrome DevTools generates a function name based on the export name, enhancing readability in stack traces. We can also view function parameters. In the scope view, we observe the value 10 passed from the JavaScript side denoted as var0. We can step over to the next function call entering our main loop. Setting a breakpoint within the loop, we can observe how var0 which is the input number remains constant while var1, which is presumably the factorial accumulator, and var2 and var3 that are likely counters change values. While this method provides some debugging insights, it's not ideal, thus requiring guesswork to interpret instructions and variable purposes and how they correlate to the original C code. Next, we'll explore a more complex example. The provided code is a C++ program using the SDL2 library to visually represent a Julia set. A Julia set is a type of fractal. It's created by iterating a simple mathematical formula using complex numbers. The beauty of Julia sets lies in their intricate, infinitely complex patterns which are generated from a simple rule applied repeatedly. As you can see, this application, while relatively small at 48 lines of code, is somewhat more complex than the previous basic C code. This complexity arises from the use of external libraries, such as the standard template library, or STL, so graphics, and the inclusion of complex numbers from the C++ standard library. As you can see, it initializes the SDL library, a graphical window, generates a palette of random colors, and then iteratively calculates the Julia set for each pixel. The pixel's color is determined by how quickly its corresponding complex value escapes to infinity under the Julia set formula. The program renders this fractal pattern onto the window, creating a visual representation of the Julia set. Now we are going to compile this C++ code in a manner quite similar to the factorial example used for basic debugging. However, there's a key difference. We are enabling the program to use as much memory as it requires by using the allow underscore memory underscore growth flag. Additionally, we are passing parameters to link it with the STL library and to generate a default HTML page instead of a custom one. Once compiled, we can open the resulting HTML file in the Chrome browser. Upon doing so, we can marvel at our beautifully rendered Julia set displayed in an array of random colors. Once again, I can open Chrome DevTools and view the generated JavaScript and WebAssembly in the sources panel. However, this time when I open the WebAssembly file, 
it appears significantly larger and more incomprehensible than the previous example for factorial calculation. We can still search for the main function and recognize some imports. Let's set a breakpoint inside the main function and load the page. As before, the breakpoint will be hit like this. From there, we can step into the main code. But at this point, we have no idea what all those instructions are and what all those variables mean. This is because there is significantly more code now than in the factorial example. Additionally, it bears zero resemblance to our original C++ code. Suppose we wish to debug using our familiar sample C++ code. Chrome DevTools now makes this possible. To achieve this, we need to have the C or C++ DevTools support or Dwarf extension installed in our Chrome browser. This extension developed by the Chrome DevTools team is designed to support debug information provided by our AM script and compiler. Let's proceed with installing it. Once installed, we'll return to our C++ code. We are going to compile it with the same dash G flag as before to include debug information. Additionally, I'll request them scripten to include the SDL2 library and allow for arbitrarily sized memory. Let's compile it. This time, when we open DevTools, in addition to the usual JavaScript and WebAssembly, we can also locate and find our original C++ code. I can not only view it, but also set a breakpoint directly within the C++ code like this. Now let's reload the page. It stops right at the breakpoint in the C++ code instead of the raw WebAssembly code. Furthermore, when we examine the scope view, instead of encountering auto-generated names as seen when debugging with raw WebAssembly, we can now observe the original C++ variables along with their corresponding types. As we step through the code, we are no longer navigating individual instructions, but rather familiar source level C++ expressions. For instance, the initialized variables like width and height are visible. Let's skip ahead, for example, and expand the nested structures to examine the generated colors, ensuring they appear satisfactory and sufficiently random. Moving forward, we can step over the C or center initialization and clearly observe the real and imaginary parts of the complex number as well. Upon stepping into the loop, we can see the Z, X and Z, Y variables. Advancing a few more steps, let me jump to the part where the program selects a color. At this point, we can see it being retrieved from the palette. After stepping through that, we can expand the color details and check which RGB values it selected for this particular pixel. This approach provides a far more intuitive debugging experience. With source level breakpoints, steps and values, it offers a practical and accessible debugging method that can be readily utilized for your applications today.